Good morning, guys. Just refilling my water. I just had 32 ounces of water this morning. And I've got a bowl of cherries here, so I'm gonna eat all of these. And then I've got some kiwis back here that I think are gonna be ready too. And we also got to go out to Costco later. So, um, well, later this morning. And I will take you guys out with us, do a little grocery shopping. I got to restock on these cherries because this is the last of them. Mint. Yeah. At Whole Foods, they have a big pack of it that you can get for only like four, four dollars. We'll just grab a pack of these. Dandelion greens. It's my favorite cauliflower. Yep. We're gonna get that one. Get one of these. There's only two left, so you got to get one. Of them. Butternut squash. You pick how it looks, right? Well, I was going to get a longer one, but that one was pretty darn cute. Yeah, I it think. is. <laughs> Let me get some basil. It's easy to grow. Mm, smells good. Cilantro. Are you eating some of these? Yeah, I'll have one. Hey guys, we just got home from grocery shopping. We went to Sprouts and Costco, so I'll do a quick little grocery haul with you um, just so you can get an idea of what, what our grocery shopping looks like for the week. So all this produce is gonna last me all week long and I, I stretch it out and you guys get to see what, what I eat during the week in these videos, but just to see what it looks like all kind of bunched together here and how much I spend to give you an idea. Uh, so at Costco, we spent $30, well, $30.93. And then at Sprouts, we spent $24.52. So about $55 grocery shopping here. I've got more this way here that you can't see. Hold on. Grab my oranges here. So I'll start here. Uh, we've got some Cara Cara oranges from Costco. Those are some of our favorite oranges. I love using these in the smoothies. I got three packages of these bananas and these are such a good deal. They're like, wait, how much for these? They're like a dollar 40 something, right? Bananas, yeah, dollar 49 for a pack of bananas. Oh, you know what? I do get questions on if I purchase only organic produce. I don't purchase only organic produce. I do eat a lot of traditionally grown produce. Um, you know, there's certain things that I'll try to buy organic if I can. One of those is celery, just because um, it's it's more difficult to clean, you know, from pesticides or anything that can get caught in there and it's very fibrous. It's just one of those things. You know, there's certain, certain produce items that are better to try to get organic if possible. Um, like berries are another one. Like here I go, I've got some organic raspberries there. One thing I will mention, there's certain places that I have seen organic produce that I will not shop because it's so outrageously priced. Like super high dollar organic stuff, no way. I am like all about saving money and being on a budget. Uh, I like the game of finding the deals. So that's why I shop only at particular places. Um, like we we have some health food stores here in town that I won't buy produce in because I'm like, are you kidding me? That's that's so expensive, that's ridiculous. I would never pay that. So Sprouts is one of my favorite places because they have really affordable organic produce. So that's why I buy my celery there and certain, you know, certain other items. I got my dandelion greens there, that's also organic. But yeah, I'm not like all organic or anything like that. I, I do eat lots of traditionally grown produce too. Okay, I just wanted to mention that because some people are like, how do you buy the organic produce? Because it's so expensive, but I, I really don't. If it's too expensive, I won't buy it. So I got three bunches of bananas at $1.49 each. And I've got all these bananas back here too. I don't, I don't know if you can see that. It's probably blocking there. But I've got all those that are ripening. And then as soon as those are all nice and spotty, then I'll uh, peel them, pack them in freezer bags, and tuck them away in the freezer so they're ready for smoothies. So let's see, what else we got here? So my dandelion greens I mentioned already, the celery. I got two bunches of the celery. So those are gonna be perfect for uh, making our smoothies. And I, I did purchase a juicer, which I am so excited for. It's coming in, I'm waiting for it. And then we can start doing some juices together. I've got some uh, cilantro, and then we've got mint, and oyster mushrooms. 
Oh, you know, and uh, shopping the price too. Whole Foods, I don't normally shop at for produce. However, they do have a couple items in there every once in a while that do have they do have good deals on. Like the mint, you can get a big package of mint for like, I don't know, four dollars for something, um, and you get a lot of it in there. So if you eat a lot of mint, then that would be a good option. But anyway, I just got the little pack at Sprouts because I was there. I didn't feel like making the trip to. Uh, Whole Foods just for that. We've got some red cabbage and then a couple of avocados, tomato. We got some bean sprouts because I've got broccoli in the fridge already and we're gonna do up some more stir fries. We've got purple cauliflower and I've got these little purple potatoes too that I got at Sprouts, so I got a bag of those. We got some basil which smells delicious. Okay, let's take off that packaging right now. There we go. Free the basil. Oh, this basil smells so good too, but this is gonna be delicious. Um, we used to do this thing where we would wrap mozzarella cheese with tomato and then huge basil leaves, and it was just like a little you know, appetizer. But instead of the mozzarella, I'm gonna be using palm hearts uh, with the tomato and basil. We've got a butternut squash. We've got a big pack of blueberries and then the raspberries. Uh, these are all from Costco and then cherries. Oh, those look so good. So those are all Costco. And then Michael got butter lettuce at Costco too. That's his, his favorite kind of lettuce. Oh yeah, also at Costco, got a couple of honeydew melons. And I think that was all. So I'm just gonna put all this away and then I'll see you guys for a smoothie. All right, we're gonna start off with a green smoothie. I'm gonna change it up a little bit. So it's gonna be a little different than our regular recipe of the protein and greens that I normally do. Um, so let's start off with our one cup ice, one frozen banana. Actually, let's do two frozen bananas. Oops. Okay, so we got two frozen bananas in there. Okay, we're gonna do one tablespoon of hemp seeds. And I've got just enough flax, ground flax left, I think. I might have to drain some more a little bit. I'll, I'll just use what's left in there, but let's see how much that is. Yeah, it's about a tablespoon and a half of flax. I've got some cucumber. This is a core and some leftover noodles. Okay, so let's put that in there. Okay, for our greens, we've got about two cups of dandelion greens, about a cup of celery, and some ginger up there. That was just, uh, well, I did like two little slices of ginger there. But I do like to incorporate ginger because it is anti-inflammatory. I'm gonna blend this down a little so we can fit more in there. We'll add a little water, just enough to get that blending. I'm just gonna blend to squeeze and compress everything down so we can fit more in. Okay, put the rest of our dandelion greens in there. And our secret ingredient, broccoli. Can you make a broccoli smoothie? Indeed, indeed we can. And it is a quick, easy way to sneak in extra broccoli in your diet because it is so good for your body. Extremely healing for the skin too. Let's put about one cup of broccoli in here. Okay, all right. Very creamy. That is pretty darn good. I like the two bananas. So I started eating like this before I started filming this project for you guys. I didn't think about you know filming for you until afterwards and I asked you on Twitter if you wanted to see this too as I'm doing this because I'm doing this all year as an experiment but I did start this ahead of time. Um, and then I started filming it later, but that's one of the first things that I have noticed is how my skin so quickly reacts to greens specifically. Um, you know, I, I love eating all kinds of fruit and everything, but the greens in particular are what is like, like magic for your skin. It is amazing what it does and how fast you heal. Um, there's a lizard running by. It's very distracting, but it has a lovely pattern to it. Very um, kind of like a leopard print. Let's see, was there anything else I was going to say about this? It's just really amazing how much it can do for your skin. That's, I mean, your whole body, you know it's working inside and out, and not to mention the energy. I haven't even got to that part, but you can definitely 
feel, I mean, you, it makes you feel good. It also is mood boosting. So you're feeling happier. You, like things don't bother you. You're just like, you're just, uh, you're on a different level. You know what I mean? It just is a night and day difference. I just can't say enough good things about greens. And it's one of the number one foods I've noticed that has just made over my skin and just brought the inflammation way down and started healing it from the inside out. It's just like, um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm like pointing my, my chin here because that's what I, I was having the most um, problem with, you know, most recently with any, any uh, digestive irritants normally show up like right around here and sometimes like right here like normally it was like if i was eating too much fat it would hit down the center of my face you know between brows and down here here and um digestive irritants was like down on my chin and jawline so um just you know coming from a place where you've like suffered from cystic like painful cystic acne for so long um to be able to heal it through diet is just it feels like so exhilarating like you can breathe you know it just feels so good and pretty much i i owe it to greens like that is where i've noticed the biggest like the more i can boost into my diet each day the better my skin gets the more glow it has like natural glow you know it's it's amazing it has totally made over my skin um so this is just a, a little update so far i know i'm still in this process and i'm going to be sharing and you know it's an experiment and I'm just gonna share as I go and as I notice changes. One other major change I've noticed is dry skin, um, especially on the feet, the heels, toes, particularly on the the tips of my toes, like my little, um, not not the middle toe, but the, the, the ring toe, <laughs> the second to the last toe. Um, I had some very dry skin there for, since I moved here and I was like, what is going on there? I couldn't figure it out, but, uh, since I changed my diet, that is now completely gone, and I now have like very soft skin on my feet and my toes. All right, I'm gonna finish this, and I'll see you guys in a bit. I gotta show you guys what Michael made. Look how cute this little snack plate is. I'm glad you're giving me credit, but I know that you know this is all your idea, pretty much your idea, right? Oh, well, so we did. Well, I thought of the ingredients, but you put it yeah. together and made it all nice. Look at that. Palm hearts for uh, to replace the mozzarella. Mm -hmm. We just bought some basil at Sprouts and some tomato sliced. And uh, put them all together like hors d'oeuvres with uh, toothpicks. I love it. I love the little curls, the little uh, how you chopped the palm hearts round, and so they split apart. So they got like this little. I don't know. I don't know if you guys can see that. Like oh, curls I didn't there. Know. That was by accident. <laughs> oh, what are these sun-dried tomatoes here? Yeah, I figured I'd put those on there with them. It does. It does look cute. Yeah. It adds a nice contrast to the plate. Those have. Are those made with oil? Yeah, they got all of oil in them. Yeah, I'm not eating the sun dried tomatoes, but Michael does. But um, they're good. Yeah, I want to find some that don't have uh, any oil. You know, would make again. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it took us so long to make that. Well, I guess we didn't think of uh, using the palm hearts because mm -hmm. we were making those or getting those at Costco. Yeah, they had like the big uh, rounds of mozzarella, like thick pieces, with the tomato and the basil. And balsamic were... vinegar. Oh vinegar. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like a perfect alternative. Like look at that. That is a perfect little piece of faux mozzarella there. The palm heart. It's not overwhelming. I'm gonna try some of that again. Mmm. All right, for lunch we're making taco salad. So we've got our red cabbage shells. You could do small pieces, you know, if you're, um, you know, if you've already cut into your red cabbage, you can just do little half taco size ones. Or if you've got your full head of cabbage, you're able to get the full leaf off there. You can do a nice big taco salad in there. You could also do this in, you know, any kind of lettuce that you want or really any kind of greens. This is what we're gonna be using. I've got red cabbage shredded here cilantro, tomato, olives, avocado. We've got some cheese here. Not really, but that looks like cheese almost, doesn't it? It's actually uh, butternut squash. I just grated some off there with my little uh, Titan peeler. And then I've got red onion here. And then we've got a couple different kinds of beans. We've got pinto and black beans and then more olives up here. I'm gonna do one with pinto beans and then one with black beans. I'm gonna add some onions in there. And right along with that, if I was doing like a pico de gallo, which is kind of what we're doing here, I would have my cilantro and tomato 
mixed with the onion, avocado, or you could do guacamole. We'll add a little of our cheese. Really, it's just for color. And olives. We're just doing a few pieces of the red cabbage in there. So we already got a lot of it for our shell going on. Okay, so that's gonna be our taco salad for lunch. And well, that's uh, one set of them anyway. So we've got more leaves to do here too. Am I getting one of these? Yeah. Crunchy taco shells. Yeah. That butternut squash cheese though is one of my favorites. Look at that. Those little shreds. Yeah. That cheese is too cute. Yeah, asparagus still works. Mmm. I'll be back for an afternoon afternoon smoothie with you guys though, so I'll see you then. Hey guys, we're gonna make a smoothie before I lose my light here. It's starting to get evening time, but I'm gonna slip this in before dinner. So I've got one cup of ice. This done though before it gets any darker. Okay, so that was one frozen banana. It's two and three frozen bananas. So we're doing a brain healthy smoothie. This is going to be full of anthocyanins. It's the, the purpley blue foods. Um, it's, it's the actual pigment in the purple blue foods. It's able to, it, you know, these are rich in antioxidants, polyphenols. I'm going to add one cup of blueberries. A cup of purple cauliflower, which looks like that. Okay, we'll add four small chunks of coconut. Add just enough water to get it to blend. Hmm. Oh, there's a nice sunset bouncing off the mountains right now. It's all pink out. That's good. Okay, so it turned out very thick, right? So we're gonna make a smoothie bowl with it. Real quick, let's grab some toppings. So we just got a little sprinkle of coconut, coconut flakes up there and the frozen blueberries, just a handful of those. You could add chia seeds if you want. I normally, whenever I eat chia seeds, I like to grind them or, you know, make gel, but usually actually I'm grinding them afterwards, even after I make gel anyway. So whenever you see the purpley blue fruits, vegetables, berries, you're seeing anthocyanins. That's the pigment and that's able to cross the blood brain barrier and improve cognitive function. So basically it's, it's brain food. Mm. That is a good one. Okay, for dinner tonight, I've got butternut squash. I just made a mash out of it. That's the butternut squash that we bought earlier at Sprouts and I've got my uh, roasted asparagus, and I think that's all I'm gonna do for dinner tonight. I'm still pretty full from the smoothie bowl that I had earlier. Uh, it turned out bigger than I thought, so it was like a double serving. And then I've got my Brazil nuts here, so I'm just gonna have one of these for my selenium for today. And I will see you guys in a little while for our chronometer summary. All right, we're on chronometer.com, my favorite site for tracking nutrients. And here's the food diary for today. The only thing that didn't get on camera was, where are they, where are they? Here we go, mulberries, my dried organic mulberries. I forgot to film those because I ate them just before, or kind of like just as I was running out the door to go grocery shopping. I took my B12 spray this morning. I don't think that got on camera. Otherwise, everything else is in there. And calories consumed for today was 1,966 calories. 76% of that was carbs, 15% was fat, and 9% was protein. 100% of targets were met today. Omega-3 to 6 ratio, I got 5.1 grams of omega-3 today. 6.3 grams of omega-6. Down here, protein, 126% today. Let's see where that came from. Black beans at the top, bananas, pinto beans, asparagus, butternut squash, cherries, hemp seeds, dandelion greens, flax seeds, broccoli. Okay, let's take a look at calcium. I'm at 142% today, so let's see what that was. Mulberries at the top of the list. Dandelion greens are also very high in calcium. Butternut squash is next. I'm, I did not know that, actually. I just learned that. I didn't realize that that would make up 20% of my calcium. That has over 150 milligrams of calcium. Yeah, I only had one and a half cups of butternut squash. That's not that much to make up 20% of my calcium for the day. That's that's a pretty good, 
pretty good amount there. Okay, so we've got black beans also, pinto beans, cucumber, broccoli, cherries, flax seeds. So now let's take a look at iron. I'm at 125% for iron today. Dandelion greens for the win. We've got butternut squash coming in hot, <laughs> black beans, mulberries, bananas, asparagus, pinto beans, cherries, black olives, cucumber. Okay, we've got Brazil nuts at the top for selenium. They always win in that category. Asparagus, bananas, pinto beans, flax seeds, black beans, hemp seeds, broccoli, butternut squash is in there, and cucumber. Let's check out the zinc. 108% today. Top of the list, hemp seeds, black beans, asparagus, bananas, flax seeds, cucumber, pinto beans, butternut squash is in there again, dandelion greens, and broccoli. So let's check out vitamin A. We're at 2,572% today. Let's see. You know what's going to be in there, right? You know. You know it's going to be the butternut squash. There we go. Top of the list, That's that took up 1,857%. Next up is dandelion greens in second place, asparagus, tomato, red cabbage, broccoli, bananas, cucumber, cilantro, cherries. Oh, vitamin E is one that I also keep an eye on because that tends to be a little lower sometimes. 172% today though. What, what do we think is in there? Let's see. Top of the list, oh my word, look at butternut squash is just winning in like almost all of these categories here. Okay, next up, dandelion greens. You know they're always in there too. Asparagus, broccoli, blueberries, bananas, tomato, pinto beans, avocado, black olives. All right, you guys, I will let you go for tonight and I will see you bright and early for breakfast tomorrow morning. Bye, guys.